I'm Shay Russell for mining.com.au and joining me today is Peter Reed, the CEO of Petrotherm. Peter, it's great to have you on. How are you? Yeah, good morning, Shay. Very well, thank you. Uh, now, I'm super excited about today's conversation. We are going to be talking about the Muckanippi Mineral Sand Project out in South Australia. But rather than just a chat, we're getting a little bit of a geology lesson on the project with some images. Uh, Peter, let's be honest, not everybody's familiar with a mineral sands project. What is it that makes this project so interesting? Well, there's a couple of things unique about the Muckanippi project. One is that we have a local source rock. Um, that's provided the source of the titanium heavy minerals. And the other confluence of good luck was that we actually had a, a shoreline, an ancient inland sea form over those uh, basement rocks, which were high in titanium. And so the titanium washed out of the basement rock and in, into that shoreline. Uh, all right, Peter, obviously not everybody is a geologist. So what on earth are we looking at? Uh, yes, Shay. So this image you can see here is a... Uh, and what we call a magnetic image. Um, it's flown by uh, airplanes. They fly a grid and produce a, a, a magnetic image. And th that's that's a bit like an X-ray, like a you know, like a human taking an X-ray. So this is like an X-ray of the Earth, and it's uh, it's been coloured to form you know wonderful colours. But what I hope you can see there is right in the middle is a big red, white, red and white blob, and then around it some lovely circular sort of features and layers. So this is what we call the Makanipi anorthosite. It's a large layered intrusion. It's been messed up and pulled apart over, over millions of years. It's actually very old. It's about 1.8 billion years old. Um, but this, this sort of X-ray of the earth, um, um, this magnetic image you can see here, gives, us, gives geologists a bit of an insight in, as to the structure of this big intrusion. Um, I'm not sure if you can see my cursor, but um, at the Duke Prospect area there, you can see a long linear magnetic feature, and then it extends up. I can trace it up to Nardu, and then it continues on for several kilometers and wraps itself around the north. So that's the, the bottom of that layered intrusion, and, and those rocks are quite elevated in titanium. Um, there's some drilling there we've done at Nardu, for instance, we've got a 44 metre intercept there from near surface, running close to 30% heavy minerals. At Duke Prospect, um, you know, 60 metres at 20% heavy minerals. So those heavy minerals occur in the deeply weathered basement rock. So that that is broken down to clay um, and the heavy minerals are stored, contained in those clays and that's uh, the heavy minerals. Um, you can see too on that image a really magnetic unit below. That's what we call widgety, and that was drilled back in the 90s um, down down to about 100 meters, and it had a lot of magnetite and a lot of titanium. That's what got us interested in the area. So we knew that this layer complex, layer complex with its rings and its layers, had a lot of titanium present, in it. and some of those layers are really enriched in titanium. And what really pricked our interest was over at clay pan on the east. There's a little subtle magnetic feature, that little blip there that was drilled, and it got over 20% titanium. And that's, that's um, you know, economic um, when it's in the basement. Anything above about 15% titanium dioxide in the basement rock is economic. So our initial interest for this area was to drill the bedrock at below. But what happened was when we went out onto the field, we found, this is what we found. So this next image actually shows some ancient shoreline sediments, which were deposited on top of those basement rocks. The top of it has been silcreted. So what happens in the desert over time with weathering and erosion and uh, heat and groundwater movement, we form a hard cap. But below that, we have these sands um, and these white sands, are ancient um, shoreline sands that are um, from the Cretaceous period. So it's the time of the dinosaurs. And when you get up, zoom in close to those white sands, you find it's full of these black layered minerals. Those black minerals there are uh, uh, leucoxines and rutile products. These are titanium minerals that have been deposited as heavy, heavy sands. So um, we're very lucky in that the ancient bedrock, which I talked about in that magnetic image, um, would, would have been exposed, forming low hills. And those hills would have been deeply eroded by streams and washed their titanium minerals into this shallow sea deposit. And that's where that's why Makanipi is so special. And just finally, this this 
image here is really a, a cartoon of the geology. So we've got in, in blue, um, that's the outline of the north side intrusion. The black outlines are our tenement, tenements there. Um, and the gray here is what's left of that inland sea sediment. So that's the ancient shoreline that we can, or outline of, of the, where those sediments are deposited. And we're finding that um, the heavy minerals are concentrated in those, in those sands. So we have two really prominent mineralized areas, uh, Rosewood East, which is where most of the drilling is, and also at Rosewood West. And both of those are in interpreted to be sort of strand line features. Uh, so it's um, yeah, we're very lucky in that we've got a confluence of bedrock, which is high in titanium, but then we've had these shallow marine sands form above, um, you know, in the Cretaceous period, that's about 100 million years ago, and deposited those titanium sand, those titanium minerals into the sands. Now, Peter, when it comes to mineral sand projects, uh, I know ease of separation is critical to the economics of it. Uh, tell me, what does that look like for you? Yes, so above, the, below that Seal Creek cap, that's only sort of one or two metres thick. Uh, we, we can air core through that. And below that, we have free running sand. So here's a photo of our geologist Sam there on site at Rosewood East. This is some of the grey sand that we are drilling at about eight, nine metres depth. That's and, you know, that's just a handful of that same sand in a pan. You can see it's full of titanium bearing minerals. It's running about 30% heavy minerals. Uh, so, um, yeah, it's, it looks like it's been very easy to separate. Uh, we've done sizing analysis. You can see uh, there in, in the pan how coarse those heavy minerals are. So they're highly amenable just using standard wet separation uh, techniques to, to produce a heavy mineral concentrate. Uh, for sale. Uh, obviously, the separation testing that you're currently doing is extremely promising for the project, uh, but these things don't happen overnight. So what sort of news can investors look forward to hearing uh, from Petrotherm over the next six months? Okay, so we've got quite a bit of drilling results to come. We actually have drilling from our basement ores, um, which is separate to Rosewood coming up in the, in the next few weeks. But then following that, we've just completed a, a 3,200 metre drilling campaign at Rosewood North. So the mineralization was open to the north. We've already drilled over a 3.6 kilometer north-south length, and we've drilled another 3.2 kilometers further north, testing extensions of Rosewood. And those drill results will be out too over, over the in the next quarter. Um, in concert with that, we're doing a lot of metal, metallurgical test work. So we're doing our first bulk sample uh, separating uh, works uh, with, with a con uh, independent consultant group, independent uh, processing group. And that'll produce our first ore that we can uh, look at um, finding out, you know, what the basket value of that of that uh, those minerals are. Uh, it sounds like there is a lot happening. Listen, Peter, I really appreciate uh, you diving into the geology a little bit here. Thank you so much for today and I look forward to the next update. Yeah, no worries. Thanks, Shay.